What up, gamers? It's Mace from Team Headkick. We are continuing Lollipop Chainsaw. This is Stage 5. This is Part 2 of Stage 5. And if you guys have been watching the other videos, this is right where we left off. Juliet is on a mission to eradicate the evil, the undead, and the witches and bitches. That's our sniper sister, Cordelia. She's helping us out on this level, though she does not really help out much. We got motherfucking cop zombies shooting at us now, hitting us with batons. It's a regular Rodney King LAPD beatdown style. Except the only difference is we're a hot chick in a bikini and we're going to whoop their ass. Police brutality. That's a fun topic. Why don't we talk about that for a while? What do you guys think? You know, I always look at it this way. NWA said, fuck the police. But we need the police. You know, I got buddies that are cops. Got a couple of buddies that are detectives, actually. And uh, I tell you what, it is a good idea to have some friends that are cops. It can get you out of trouble when you need it to. Uh, but more than that, when you kind of see what they have to do for a living and, and the kind of bullshit they have to deal with, it gives you an entirely new perspective and attitude towards police. You know, when I was a kid growing up, I was like, fuck cops, because they were always just messing with us when we were trying to skate or... You know, at the park, and just minding our own business. We were just kids, you know, but they were always harassing us, and I was like, man, fuck cops. But then growing up and becoming friends with cops and stuff, you start to see what they deal with. And, I mean, these guys are putting their lives on the line every single day. They're getting shot at. Everybody hates them. Nobody wants to see a cop. You know what I mean? So anytime you do see one, you're like, man, fuck you. It's kind of a rough thing, but then, you know, you go into the brutality and... Yeah, I mean, there's there's bad cops, just like any other kind of business, any other kind of fighting in the world. You know, there's police officers that are shady, man. They they steal your weed and friggin' smoke it. Just got 78 coins on that sparkle hunt, and that is friggin' epic. So I'm going to get a bunch more on this one. Using my special powers against the sub-bosses is always a great idea. These guys right here will just give you a shit ton of coins. I wish I could have gotten all three of them in one strike. I would have gotten more sparkle hunting, but look at all these coins. It's a coin fiesta up in this bitch. Now, I love this because I'm such a friggin' noob trying to grab this thing. And I do this like three times, like a total idiot. I'm going to go back to the uh, police brutality shit while this is going on because this takes a quick second. I'm trying to figure out what the hell. Maybe if I eat one of my lollipops. Oh, that's the trick. Uh-huh. I'll figure it out eventually. Anyway, Rodney King, you guys know about that guy. You heard about that. That's what sparked the L.A. riots. That was back in 1992. That was forever ago. But a bunch of cops beat the shit out of him. And you know what? Rodney King is a criminal piece of shit. He was his whole life. That doesn't justify what the cops did to him. But the irony is not only did he win the lawsuit and get millions of dollars for that, but he continued his same piece of shit lifestyle after that, which really kind of, even though it didn't take away from what the cops did, it kind of showed us. There we go. See, you got that lollipop. It showed us, in fact, that the cops maybe were on to a little bit of the right thing. I mean, Grand, they shouldn't have beat the shit out of him like that and for the whole world to see. And it did create, you know, crazy, crazy tension in Los Angeles. We'll never forget that. Bunch of people died, bunch of shit got blown up, bunch of looters, you know, all that stuff. But uh, he was a drug addict, Rodney King was. He was a spouse abuser. He used to beat the shit out of his girlfriend. He ended up drowning in a swimming pool. And everybody was like, oh, man, what a poor guy. He drowned in a pool. And then they find in his body he had crack and cocaine and weed and meth. Like, just horrible, horrible shit. Alcohol, you know. And uh, then, then you look at that and you're like, well... You know, the guy's a criminal. I mean, fuck, the cops weren't really that wrong, were they? And, you know, I can't stress enough that they were wrong to beat the shit out of them. I mean, there's never really a case where any human being should be held down and beaten mercilessly. You know, except maybe maybe Justin Bieber, or just for fun. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm fucking around. You know, so I'm glad the dude got his money, but, you know, he could just continue to live his lifestyle like a piece of shit. And that's what cops deal with every single fucking day. And so it's changed my perspective towards police. And, uh, you know, like I said, I got buddies that are cops, and I've raced a couple of them. I like to race. And one of my buddies who will remain unnamed, I went to high school with, he became a highway patrol. 
He has one of those really badass highway patrol cars that's like a bass car or whatever it's called. Thing or an interceptor, that's it. Those things are made for speed, they're made to catch you. And uh, I used to have a really badass WS6 Trans Am. All pimped out, all tuned out, and I could smoke him. Anytime we would race, I would dust him. And he always told me, he was always like, listen, man, if you ever want to run from the cops, you're, you're the kind of guy that could probably get away with it. He said, you know, you can never outrun radio and you can never outrun the helicopter, but if you know how to drive and you got a car with horsepower, you stand a chance. Now, I'm not suggesting you run from the cops. I'm just telling you what he said. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun with that. Anyway, that's enough ranting about police and police brutality and Rodney King and all that shit. I will move back into the gameplay. You guys are seeing more of a mix now of the zombies. You just saw a football zombie on stage five, which is supposed to be the last level. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little spoiler alert right now. It is not the last level. Uh, it is the last real in-game level, but after you beat this level, Killabilly comes around. He's a big, fat Elvis-looking fucker who is the final boss. And yeah, so that's what we're going to get to deal with. But there is a stage six. It is a short stage, and you guys will see that. I am so excited to be getting towards the end of Lollipop Chainsaw. I cannot even tell you. I've been playing so many other games, and it's not that I haven't had a great time playing this. It's just that, man, is a full playthrough a massive commitment. It is such a massive commitment. For you guys that make machinima videos and YouTube videos that do full playthroughs, my hat's off to you. Uh, I've done a million playthroughs in my life in video games, but look at that ass. I'm sorry, I gotta just stare at that for a minute. If you try to bend her over, she covers it up, which is ridiculous. I really wish they wouldn't have done that, because, I mean, I could just sit and stare all day. But, uh, yeah, back to the playthrough thing. I just I just don't have the time in my life, because I game so much and I record so much, to actually do all that, make music videos as well, which is my true love. I love doing that. Uh, but then coming... Coming and doing full playthroughs, I mean, they take an incredible amount of time. By the time you capture all the footage, edit all the footage, I, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's crazy. So my hat is off to you guys who have done a bunch of full playthroughs. Um, I've done a couple, and, you know, when Halo Reach came out, I decided I was going to do one for that. And after about the third video, I was like, screw this. I'm not going to play all the way through this campaign. No way. This is our other sister. The younger sister. We deal with her in stage two or stage three, I think, the O'Bannon farm. But she's helping us out. This is Rosalind. And throughout this whole thing, the recurring theme is that she cannot drive, and that is definitely the case on this level. She is driving a friggin', what's it called? A, like, demolishing wrecking ball. Big-ass tractor. And she's going to kill some zombies for you, knock stuff out of the way for you and allow you to continue out of that huge tractor. But just like your other sister, she doesn't really help out much. She just kind of paves the way for you. You always want to look around. That's what I'm doing right now. I know it looks like a time waster, but there are still lollipops and things that I have not found throughout the game. And that's after doing like five playthroughs. And every playthrough, I find one that I didn't find before. I think probably by my 25th playthrough, I'll uh, finally unlock everything. But no, that's not the case at all. I have not been an achievement whore in quite a while. I used to care about achievements. Now I just get the ones that I care about. You know, sometimes I'll make a video for something like uh, on Dead Rising 2, I actually took the time to get the zombie genocider achievement. And that took like eight hours for 20 points. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It's not really worth it. And some of you guys are achievement whores and some of you guys aren't, you know, and I like to put myself right in the middle. Sometimes it matters to me, and I got to get them all. Sometimes I just don't give a shit. Especially when they're incredibly hard, time-consuming achievements. There was one for Final Fantasy. I will never forget this. It was, I think it's still one of the hardest achievements ever. Each one of the achievements was to level a certain class of character to its highest level. Well, each one of those would take you 100-plus hours of gameplay, and there were like 12 of them. It was ridiculous. So you can only imagine playing 1,200 hours of a game. I mean, I, I, the only games I've ever done that with are shooters. You know, I'd say like Halo 3, I definitely have that many hours in. 
Now I've got like 78,000 online multiplayer kills, something like that. So you can imagine, it takes a while. But I don't know, are you guys achievement horrors? Let me know, you know? I, I like to interact with you guys. Put it down in the comment section below. I do my weekly Q&As, you can hit me up on that. This is another one of these little jumping button mashing games. But this one's cool because at the end of it, everybody dies if you do it right. You're already dead. <laughs> and then we'll blam, everybody blows up. So that's really cool. And then you got some more little sub bosses here. I'm just gonna waste toward these fuckers and keep moving. But I think, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and find a spot to cut this video. You know, fuck it. I can make you go a little bit longer. I've been trying to keep these at a reasonable viewing time for you. I know that I enjoy watching long YouTube videos, but I know that not everybody does. And when I look at my analytics on my channel, I see that the majority of my audience watches the first 10 minutes of anything I put up. So be it a music video, be it a playthrough, you guys are good for about 10 minutes. After that, you start to fall off, and I totally understand. Uh, I really do. I really get that. You know, like I said, I've watched full movies on YouTube. I've watched two-hour uploads, but that's not for everybody. Most of you guys are just checking out YouTube, see what's going on before you're doing your own gameplay or before you're going to school or going to work or whatever it is the fuck you're doing. We all got fun, busy, crazy lives. So she's freaking out with the wrecking ball. This can hurt you here. You got to be careful. Uh, you got to shoot the little flying guys around her and save her. And then you'll be able to move forward. And like I've said in a bunch of these videos, anytime you kill three zombies in quick succession or more, and you can do it by shooting, you enter sparkle hunting and get a ton of coins. So you definitely want to do that just like that. And I can see I'm actually racking up a nice little uh, thing of coins over there. So I'm going to have to figure out a place to go spend them. That's another three in a row. It's actually incredibly hard to be accurate in this game with the uh, Nick Cannon. And it's because there's an auto-aim on it. And they did a terrible job with it. If you quick scope and just kind of zoom in real quick and shoot, then the auto aim doesn't really affect you as bad. But uh, man, is it friggin' horrible. You'll pull it and you'll see if you watch through this playthrough of you know a bunch of these videos that I screw it up a million times. I'm trying to shoot one guy and then it auto aims to someone else. So anyway, guys, that's it. It is your boy Mace from Team Headkick. I got part three on the way after this one. Thanks for watching. You guys have an epic fucking day. Peace.